and let me welcome everybody. My name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm uh, a uh, nightly host of EdChat Interactive. Uh, we're having two EdChat Interactives this week. Uh, tonight, we're talking about integrating art into academics, and we've all we've all heard about STEAM and STEM, and how the A in STEAM is what changes it from something that's only primarily using one side of the brain to what's using both sides of the brain. And we're going to be talking about, well, I'm not going to be talking about it, but Natalie's going to be talking about is how to integrate art into basically everything we do because we find it's really motivating for students. Um, I just, I do want to let people know, and maybe I will uh, share my screen for just a second and just say, well, actually I have two things. So one is, uh, is, you know, upcoming events, uh, Tonight is is Natalie and integrating art into academics, but tomorrow afternoon we're um, Jim Kiggins is going to be talking about he builds um, virtual reality games, um, fully immersive games, and he's going to be talking about what he's learned building immersive learning games, and I think that's going to be applying more and more to schools because more of our instruction is going to be done remote. So I, th I think that's going to be a fascinating talk. I'm really looking forward to it, and then mm -hmm. you see the other events that we're having in May and June. And I will say that tonight's uh, talk is really being, not that, not that they're paying for it, but uh, the speaker is coming to us uh, through 3D Bear because Natalie is a 3D Bear ambassador. Uh, 3D Bear, as you'll find out, is, a, is, a, is an app that allows kids to build digital stories and videos through the use of augmented reality. And if you go to 3dbear.io and you register on the website, you can get a 30-day free subscription if, if you're interested. But I, the techniques, the, the examples that Natalie's going to be using tonight, um, you can certainly do them in 3D Bear, and we'd love you to try them in 3D Bear. But I think that these are applicable to however you want to integrate art into, in your community, and we want you to feel like you get something um, very valuable out of tonight. So I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to hand over to Natalie, who's uh, right here on my left on, on my screen. And Natalie, welcome welcome to uh, New York, because I'm coming That's from New York. Welcome, to, uh, and Natalie's from Indiana. I am, I am a Hoosier. <laughs> and it is nice to be with you. And I hope that I can uh, inspire you to use 3D Bear. So, do you, I'm going to share my slides, I think. Share. Maybe, maybe not. Mitch, do you have to share I, with I, me? No, you, you should be able to share because you're a co-host. But if by any chance it's not working, I have your slides also. So I can share them and you can just tell me when to advance. Okay. I think it's, it's not popping up. So I would appreciate that very much. Okay. Okay. So um, there we go. There's right. That's the slide. Okay. And someone, Linda Edwards, would like to enter. She's popped up oh. on my screen. <laughs> okay. Um, can you let her in, or because I don't have. I will. Up yet, but... I, I I'm getting special privileges now. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, tonight it is one of those things where I would love very much for you to. Um, use augmented reality which 3d bear is an app that is that and it helps everyone to learn i think uh, any subject matter as you apply the just the basics and then build upon them um, and i say engagement for learning starts when students can explore discover and create because that is what 3d bear allows the students to do when they open the app. There's a, a feeling of exploration when you click on the little uh, symbol for the forms. And once you activate that button, it get, takes you to the galleries to, to discover what they have to offer. And then based off your selection, you build and create, and it just is magic. That's uh, just like it's magical. So you may move to the next slide. So tonight I'd like to introduce AR and Art, selecting 3D Bear and sharing my story behind why we selected it for my school and um, student after school program. 
and how I went about designing and sharing my examples with you tonight and creating standard-based lessons. I have one that I want to share with you. So you just kind of have a little glimpse into how we created and worked ours. And I, I, I rewrote it. I know I started it one way, but I actually published the lesson online tonight with my slides that was the corrected version. Uh, and then a lesson shared on 3D Bear that um, they're available to teachers. There, I've got a new person joining us. And then um, also the ability to do 3D printing. The 3D printing is something uh, once your students understand the process and, uh, and, and are older and in wanting to try that leveling up, uh, 3D Bear offers that opportunity for your learners. You may go to the next slide. Are you there, Mitch? There you go, thank you. And so now I'd like to take a poll because this was a, a situation I was in that I'd like to know a little bit more about yours. Uh, what number of iOS devices do you have access to for your class? And I'm going to share the poll with you. And you can just click on one of those and we will leave that up. And as you select, I'm admitting Mrs. Oh, Lisa Derp is here tonight. Hi, Lisa. Um, I have a poll question up right now. How many iOS devices, iPhones or iPads, do you have access to for your class? You can answer none or one or three, four to nine, 10 to 19, or more than 20. I expect we're not seeing yours because we're seeing uh, Mitchell's Mitch's screen. Uh oh. So we don't see the poll. Okay, I apologize. Thank you for sharing that. That's I'm, then I um. I'm omitting Denise, and I'm going to click that down, and then I'm going to. Will you put that up, Mitch? Sure. I'm. Thank you for letting me know because I didn't see it, and I thought it was. And see, it was I, just because I was sharing, but okay, I'm launching the poll. Okay. And I already read it, so I'll pause. Are we good? Okay. We're getting close. So I think I'm. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the polling because I think you know we have a good. I think we're good. Okay, and I'm going to share the results so that people can see. And I, um, well, you probably would have said this also, but I, I will say that 3D Bear works on either iOS devices or Android devices. And as uh, as we'll, Natalie will go through, you do not need a device for every child. And all of these lessons can be adapted so that you, if you have one device for the class, it could be a cell phone or it could be a tablet. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can, many most of these lessons can be done with one device. Personally, I love to see classes where they're using two to five kids. Uh, working in groups on projects because I think that there's a certain amount of energy when the kids are working together. Um, so you do not need one to one. And then some, and then uh, sometimes teachers will use them as one to one and have every child uh, develop their videos or their scenes or different parts of a, of a whole scene. So, um, so we have a pretty good mixture here because we have uh, mm -hmm. a couple of people uh, who seem to have one to one and then um, some who have groups and a few that don't have any, but hopefully you have access to cell phones or Androids. And even if you don't, these techniques you'll be able to use in your class, um, you know, having kids draw or, or other ways of incorporating art. So I'm going to stop sharing the results and, um, and then I'll go back to your slides. Okay. And here we go, right? That's true. So if you step on to the, or move to the next slide, please. There you go. And when I said dream big using AR, it was due to the fact that we were designing a mural 
for the Longfellow Lions in our gym. Uh, we have all blank walls with the exception of a blue band all the way around. And the students thought that that would be a good problem to solve and encourage our school to invest. And um, so I shared my lesson and it, Mitch, if you'd click my hyperlink, it'll take us out to that. And I'll share because this could be done. Maybe, maybe not. I'm sorry, I don't have access. Okay. So if I had access, I would show you this great lesson, but maybe, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll come, I'll come back. I, okay. I'll go. I, I, I yes, mean, you, you should be able to share your screen. Why don't you try one more time to share your screen? Uh, I got the poll question, right? And you know what, my, there we go. Okay, so now you can go to your, the, wherever your slides are. There we go. And maybe make them a little larger. Yes, I, I'm gonna, uh, I'll go into present mode. There we go. And, sorry, I'm jumping your eyes all around. Here we go, is my, this is my lesson. And I need to move my people over. There we go. <laughs> It's silly to do this for the first time. All right, so here we go. Uh, my MP3 after school program is what encouraged me to create this lesson. And again, you can see one of my students with our iPad and I'm actually assisting someone in front of them in this. And my overall purpose was for them to collaborate. Now I divided my uh, students in teams of four. And in doing so, I allowed them to uh, each pick a role for the activity on 3D, using 3D Bear. And this is my second graders that were in the gym designing. Some of them were seated because they were the timers. And as we go through, I'll make sense of this. Um, I know that there was someone that left a message about wanting more about math. Mine was more in, uh, about the timer. I gave a timer and second grade has to learn time and in inter intervals of 10 and 15 minutes, we were switching the iPads to a new student to make that happen. So there was another measurement that once their mural was designed, they had to count how many blocks were up there for a measurement guide, just in the scale as of from the picture to the wall. So that was another math connection we made with 3D Bear. Um, the tech, I integrated the ISTE standards. The only one, and I, I have to say the global standard to share the students' work, I'm accomplishing tonight. This is a big win to me that we've made it to this level. Yes, I know, it's like, yay! Um, language, spelling, the, they had to put the letters Longfellow, in block lettering on the wherever they decided to do that for their design with our lion and uh, so spelling we had a spell checker because longfellow is a big long word for a second grader and they needed that little uh, cue card so they had a little index card with longfellow and i had some of them want to write longfellow lions and However they designed it, it was up to them. And then we talked about the quality of their design when we were finished. But art and design, I could cover a lot of Indiana state standards for visual arts. The core, um, core Common Core, they don't follow that. So in, a, in agreement of my state standards, I have to follow those. So in doing so, I posted those. And Learning objectives, they're very simple. Collaborative learning in groups of four using iPads. If I hadn't had uses of iPads, we would have had clipboards and paper. We still would have had, you know, maybe I would have utilized just one clip, a clipboard per team and then have ample pieces of paper there and they would go in and they would design this. It, it is not an end all of it being using tech. If you do not have tech, this is just something I did to, understand that the arts can be embedded in a collaborative effort. 
So um, designing the mural using the school name and the mascot in the gym was our goal there. And then the one thing I struggled with in the beginning was our school did not have strong enough Wi-Fi. And so the kids would look up in the ceiling and go, oh, Ms. McAuliffe, we don't have a blue light. And as silly as that was, as they yelled that to me, we knew our signal was low. That light was our indicator that it wasn't on as strong or it'd flicker. Oh, that was even better. Um, it, we kind of felt like we were in a horror movie. So know that your school needs to address those issues if they want you to use technology. Um, I know that 3D Bear also uses a lot of uh, power in the charge needs to be a full charge. Don't let anybody pass you an iPad that's under, you know, 50% or lower because you'll, you'll drain the battery and that's no fun for anybody if you're really using tech. Um, and again, I, I had somebody that came in after, and I, I even wrote this on their teams of two or four, because there was a couple um, instances where behavior was an issue for me, and I teamed them down to two, and it worked out better for them. And then make sure the 3D Bear app is installed on the iPads that you're willing and wanting to use. Sometimes the tech team will do that, and sometimes you have to do it yourself. And I did that, I had to do that and go to the portal and do that download for our school's iPads. Um, verification is very simple, I'm not gonna reread that. And then down there where the activities are, I shared that I had the design location, that person had to pick it, and they were the iPad monitor. Because if you're walking around with 3D Bear, you have to be really conscientious of your space. And sometimes you're, you're walking to get the positioning of your design that if someone's not monitoring you, you might bump into something. So you, or, you know, bump into a neighbor or get too close, or you walk in the front of someone else's design. So that would be the reason why we had them. And then the iPad person was the iPad designer. The, everyone had a turn doing that, but that was the one thing. We just rotated these positions. And again, I told you the timer and the spell checker. So that is kind of where I enjoyed this lesson and we fine tuned and really where I started and how I ended this lesson is a little bit different, but it, I wanted to share that with you. And I know I took a little of my time there to share, but um, as you introduce and go through that, it definitely makes, it makes, a difference in how you approach things and I'm always willing to improvise. Uh, you can see my little helper teams here. I'm sharing with my cursor because it's really cute. I'm sitting here laughing because I can just imagine see that day and where some of them were out and about and trying to figure it out <laughs> where they put it. Someone to put they were facing it on the blue mat because they thought the blue background was really pretty and I said really do you think we could paint the mural there? So it's problem solving 101 but it was a joy to see them do that. But All right. As you're describing this problem, you know, it's an interesting, it's interesting because there are a lot of cases where uh, teachers have, have done similar design problems. Uh, you did it in the gym, but Susan Sclafani is a, is a librarian in middle school, and she had the kids redesign the library. Sa exact same thing where they're, um, they're trying to figure out and problem solve, well, what, what do we find wrong with the library? Other have had uh, their classes go and redesign the playground to make them more kid friendly. So that general project of giving the kids a space and saying, well, you know, um, you've complained about this in the past, tell us what we need to do to fix it and let the kids redesign it. And should any of their designs end up being adopted, it's like the feeling of pride that they get is, yes, is pretty it incredible. Is. It, it, it's heartfelt as a teacher and as the students. And, and then too, uh, it's a team effort. It's really collaborative because as they all were in there working, they're also discussing the designs. And when I get to the a few slides down, you understand what I mean when we're talking about that critique. Um, but the Bloom's revised taxonomy could not have made it, it, this is one that makes me the happiest because creating is at the top and it is the whitest. And um, that base being upside down makes me feel good for it to be open at the top. I think it's my ice cream cone. And that is the joy. I do see all of those as being very important, but I feel like the thought process and the problem solving that goes in designing with 3D Bear 
makes it a top choice. All right, so explore. I said easy access and fun to use. 3D Bear is that app. It really makes a joy and discover endless opportunities to learn more. It's true. And I find it every time I'm on there, I see something or find something and I, they're all the time building and improving the site. And I appreciate that about 3D Bear. They listen to their, their users and everybody appreciates that. Uh, create. Technology transforms our ability to design enhanced learning experiences. Again, if you don't have technology, it is the wish for, I think, all schools to build out that infrastructure for their bandwidth and the availability of Wi-Fi. I know equity is an issue in my school as we're going through our school closure and finishing up next week with e-learning and not all of our students had access. So I understand completely and feel for that situation. Uh, learning new technology using 3D Bear. The 3D Bear program is sponsored by a grant from Ball State University and I was selected as a instructor for this afternoon after school program. Uh, with it, it has helped build out our platform of infrastructure, I should say, for technology usage in my room. And uh, that was a group photo that we took. And you, I have to say, it's, it's funny and it's not funny. The little radius circle that's on that around the backside of the lion, had I clicked one more click, I would have removed that guide bar that was selecting the location. But just to realize that it was a learning experience for me too before I took the photo. I love that photo and it means a lot to me, even if it does have a little perimeter around the edge that it, I mean, I could have improved my photo. And that's the one thing, as a teacher, I grow with this every time I'm sharing it with the students because they share something new with me. It's great. And as I was sharing with you earlier, the idea of the teacher dashboard, this is something that was purchased for the after school program for safety. And they wanted to make sure that they housed the students in a atmosphere where we weren't just posting photos willy nilly. And there is an access point where they can publish. And by doing that, it allows them to take and share their work and when we do a final critique we come back to the teacher's dashboard where i can share it using my projector and they love that and we scroll through them and they talk about things and yes this was valentine's gallery that we had selected to do and it was all about emotions and we were talking more and more this year about social emotional learning and this fit in perfectly and 3d bear has that kind of encompassing learning built into it. So if you're um, working with social emotional learning, 3D Bear is also an app for you. And speaking of every child has special needs, I wrote in the bottom of my notes on this that Maria Montessori would love this and I had- So there was a question. So, so when um, the kids are doing the, those, uh, their photos and their scenes, do you or do they share them with their families also? Yes and no. We we publish some of those out on the Facebook that's a private Facebook with our families. So again, that was guarded and protected, but those those photos were shared and that's that is a acceptable if, if it's for the after school program for publication and for the final like we had a final program so some of those were selected to share with our families on the final final uh, end of year session that they celebrated. It was their end of year celebration. So yes and no, if that makes sense. I mean, it was, it was really protected. Um, but in another realm of this slide that I wanted to share for creativity and critical thinking, communication and collaboration, sometimes we have our learners and I know I have them in the art room with autism and I have great success with 3D Bear. It allows all my learners that level of success. I do not have anyone off task and some of the students that would normally kind of get 
off task or visit with someone or be a distraction, moving in the room, something of that sort, 3D Bear pulls their focus in such a way that they're in charge of their learning and they love the design and storytelling that 3D Bear offers. And it, they, if anything, some of the students with autism are on it and more uh, focused than some of my general ed. Just, I, I wanna share that because I've observed that as a teacher and I want everyone to realize that there is uh, an amazing learning curve with the use of this app. And here is something I did as a fun thing. I did this elements of art applying augmented reality and I created this little slide deck of all the elements of art. And this is my CAD, which I used as a texture on top of a sphere embedded on my jeans and my pants, so, or my jeans. Um, and I wrote, a line is a line, but with 3D Bear, it's much, much more. And I can capture that picture and they can create something of their liking and it's endless. And then one thing when I say, we're gonna design and show as many kinds of lines, I can have an instructional text on my board, but they can go anywhere they wanna go with it as they design and place picture overlay in the environment they select. And that's another thing. They can create art on the table with whatever they choose as a line and they can overlay and do an augmented reality form or shape or picture in on it. There's lots of little tricks that you can do with 3D Bear and that's where your advanced learners slowly but surely start to click on new, new tools at the bottom where they duplicate or they add textures, they do stamping and all of those things make 3D Bear even better. Um, shapes, I argued about shapes and forms because there's some of the things that are listed as shapes in 3D Bear and I've talked to UC about this. And I say a shape is a shape, but with 3D Bear it's much, much more because 3D Bear is taking a shape and augmenting it into a 3D form. And those forms of the lettering that were art rocks, again, you can see my arrow. And as I was a new learner to 3D Bear, I clicked the image, not realizing had I tapped the picture one more time, I would have eliminated that arrow above. And the joy of just posting that just shares and shows my learning. And I wanted that to be in there for you too. Um, this is my fancy one. Uh, I did primary colors with the spheres love love loved it and when i say it's it's much more when you place 3d bear and move your forms they shrink in the distance as you slide them back and the perspective of the spheres and its shadow made me just love it and then i had to i got to click and select a character to show my learning of aha <laughs> and when your kids and as an adult can find the joy in creating with this app, I think that's the reason why I'm so hooked and wanting to be an ambassador. All right, value is another, and it says value is not just degrees of light and dark, it's much, much more. When you do the value of certain images, you see that the definition and quality of the graphics in 3D Bear are beautiful. And sometimes they're so realistic, the kids are like, that really looks real. And I, like, I laugh because I'm thinking, that's the point. And I aligned those and I thought the shadow lines were really beautiful. And I loved the value. That was one of the perfect ways I could share with my students to create a collection. Oh, and they even have a medieval section for class. You can build castles. I don't know. It seems castles is like a cardboard build. It's a drawing. It's a painting. It's everything in my classroom. So form is not just a form. It can be augmented or 3D printed using 3D Bear. And some of the students are wanting to take and download the files for some of these to actually make castle building blocks for the room. And that's another big solve of a problem and we do have a location that we can use and um i'll tell you more about that in just a few minutes uh, i'm going to texture first t is for texture and this is one of the things for spelling 
for the littles. I love this because we do a lot of spelling words for all the vocabulary in art. And I know you each have a content area of vocabulary that you would have to do too. And this is a little bit more fun and have a great day with your students utilizing. And again, this could be table work for some, this could be a unique space for another group where they have a like one device and you've allowed them to go to the special station to use 3D there while the others are working independently in a different way as a station would work. Um, but when they realize that the implied and real, that, that is a understanding, they see it there and they know they're making the letter and they see the texture, but it's like real or implied. And we always talk about that, of which is real and which is implied because they say the letter has a texture because it's smooth. And I always, I, I, they always delight me. That's a good thing. All right, space is the illusion of depth, but using 3D, uh, 3D bear, it's much more. I had a student who found the duplication tool and encouraged, they, they started a section of the bear. And if you've ever used 3D bear, which if you haven't, you, when you do, you'll realize this happens. There's an animation section and the little bear will dance and he changes, colors and patterns on his outfit. And there's a collection of these bears in there that are blue at a section. And then you see the other ones that are in a different outfit. It's because he added a collection and once they had changed their color, he added another collection by duplicating the bear as it was dancing. And he said, look, I have a band. You know, they were just dancing. And then he was talking about the theater. I mean, it just, it went everywhere with his idea, but he was so happy with himself and he wanted to share that. And I didn't know at the time, and I'm not sure if it even had the record button at that time, but regardless, that'll be the next uh, thing that we will use in our classroom is to hold the photo button to add a recording to our story. That is the storytelling button. So, you know, the seven steps for implementing design thinking in your classroom. This is a slide that was collaborated with uh, as a collaboration for this pro or slide deck by Mitch. And I appreciate him very much because he took the time to share with me and help me better prepare for my evening's event. And Accept a challenge. That is one of the things we all have every day, whether it's our students that we're posing the challenge to or our day in the classroom. And research, we did a lot of uh, planning before we selected the gym as an area that we needed to add something to for a design element. They thought that that was a need. Um, we, dis we discussed the outcome, whether we were actually, if we didn't get to paint it, would it be disappointing? And they were like, no, it'll be fun. And then we can send our pictures to Mr. Moore, which is our principal. And uh, their, their ideas were shared and we critiqued them up on the teacher dashboard, which again, we had a class license for that. Um, we we kind of rolled it out as a trial to see what 3D Bear would look like, feel like in the classroom. And so, yes, that, that's where I'm at with that. Uh, I'm moving on. Decide uh, the possible solutions and design elements based on the assessment, benefits, risk, and cost. We also talked about the cost of the paint. They were like, oh, it would cost that much to put a, a lion on the wall? And so that was a math. If you don't think it's a big math when we were talking about that and how much, how many, you know, gallons of paint it would take, what colors we would need. And it went, I mean, it's just like an endless solving of a problem. And then sometimes it wasn't cost effective in their thoughts. And they thought maybe we should apply for a grant to see if we could do that later on. So um, the compose and build and document and present, those are things that the the dashboard allows all of us to share as a teacher if you and i will say 3d bear offers schools also a package deal for their classroom teachers and where we were just with one classroom available at the time uh, that is something if you speak to 3d bear they will talk to your school and arrange 
to, to decide like what is best for you for funding. And so I would encourage you to do that. Uh, exploring more with 3D Bear as an instructor. I was on their site and I realized when I was going through their lessons, they have lessons on their website once you uh, open your account and you can explore that teachers, all the lessons that are available when you take and do the free. Uh, so check that out. I would encourage you to. That's how I discovered it for the first time. And then um, I started writing curriculum for visual arts. I did a whole lesson for primary colors and that was the cover for my lesson plans. So I'd encourage you to attempt in your own content area. Uh, social emotional lessons. I also shared and spoke about social emotional uh, learning because SEL is in a lot of our schools now and we've been developing more and more um, no lessons of thoughtfulness and 3d bear has these emoji con emoji cons or emoji people or uh, animated blockheads I don't, and when you click on them i was speaking about uh, their ability to select someone that looks like them and that was a turning point and it's also one of those things for sharing your feelings that some days we come in and this would be a good indicator. Pick, pick one that describes how you're feeling today. And I'm actually thinking about sending these pictures to the print shop and maybe, or not even print shop, we could draw these. We could draw these out and actually do emotion, emotions and that way they'd have them a visible and they'd also have a connection to 3D Bear. But just thinking out loud, it works and they're great. And then 3D printing is another thing that there is a location across the street from my school that's a satellite library to the Muncie Public Library. And they have a, a maker bot. It's really fun. And some of our students go to this um, library for the use of the 3D printer. They have an after school program where they teach printing and they have them on the computers doing Tinkercad. And I, I had so many students share with me, you need to do that, Mrs. McCallum. You've got to go to the library and try it. And I said, well, I'm going to print a bear. And so I did. I, I printed a 3D bear. And these are my pictures from the day I was there and visiting. And I went through the program. And that was a picture of my computer screen as I was working. And then the instructor, he ran the, the 3D printer. From the library that wasn't something I was able to do and then at the end we talked about math because they have a scale that they weigh the model the 3d mo 3d printed model on and then there's a fee for that model so there's my math and there <laughs> I know there's so many ways to build a lesson that encompasses so many areas of learning so uh, 3D Bear fits that. It, it, it makes it complete. And inside it houses more. There is an app called Thingiverse that allows you to bring in additional 3D models into the app to use in your designs. And you can color code them. Like if you bring in a, a dinosaur and you want it green or purple or pink whatever you can use the color changer and change those 3d models that you bring in from thingy first you do have to have an account when you open that but once you're inside 3d bear you can link to thingy verse right there and sketch lab is also an additional uh, resource to use and this is where your junior high high school i would feel would be very successful in developing their skills of learning for um, 3D design. This is, this is more and it leads them to a higher level of learning and allows even those that are needing enrichment to go and re, you know, use these resources within the app. So from your youngest to your oldest and even, I would even encourage even some of the university levels, like these are, uh, Sketchfab designing for your yourself, like you're designing 
3D models. And there are artists out there that are doing that and doing well, just as we have witnessed every medical person having a 3D printed shield, you know, band up above. And that was such a, a neat innovation to solve a problem for our, all of our medical personnel during this crisis that we're in. And I guess that's a yet another reason why I support 3D Bear. And if you want to continue your learning or learn with us as we grow um, as professionals, 3D Bear puts out challenges on Twitter and other locations like social media. They share uh, an idea of how to create something and it pushes your thinking to post it and uh, share with others. So that is my presentation so thank you for joining me tonight well thank you if you can just go back to the emotion one the emotion slide because i thought yeah. just one thing i wanted to um to bring up so what's interesting in the emotions is that you can use these for the kids to tell stories yeah. and when they have a hard time expressing their own emotions they have an easier time talking about the emotions using the emojis where they're a little bit displaced um, there was uh, one child, I think in Arkansas, um, who uh, they were supposed to, everybody was supposed to do a story about an emotion, and she showed the crying child with mm -hmm. a dog on its side, and then the next picture, instead of the crying child, was the happy child, and the dog, she changed the dog so that it was standing up. And the emotion story was putting together those two pictures to say, I was really sad this weekend because my dog was sick, but, but after he took the dog to the vet and it was fine, I was feeling much, much happier. And so being able to, to help kids label their emotions or talking about um, situations where they saw somebody else who was sad or somebody else who was angry can, can very often be, be helpful. That was great. Thank you, Mitch. Yeah. So I, yeah, that was, it, this is really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody that joined tonight. And I am happy to have a recording because I'll love to listen to this too. I know that sounds silly, but it is interesting to know and to hear yourself back. Yeah. I, I'm sure I have lots of room to improve, but You're I'm very really engaging sharing, sharing my learning with all of you tonight. So if, if other people here have questions or ideas for lessons that you want to bounce off Natalie, um, or even me, but especially Natalie, because she's, she's, <laughs> she's a lot smarter than I am. Um, what, you know, just, um, you can unmute yourself and come up and you ask a question or, or share something. I want to give people a chance to do that if, you, if that's what you'd like. And I have a question. Um, Natalie doesn't bite. I, I sometimes do. So um, feel free to come up. Yeah. I, I know that there's several of you out there that do not have extra devices. And that would be something I'd encourage you to ask your administrator or your tech support to see if that is something you could just start simply by asking for one and then create a station that has that availability to use the app. And once they realize and you see it working, you'll understand whatever problem solving or storytelling they're doing with that app, how well it works. And that's also a, a great testimony to your tech department that way they understand well you don't want to invest in something that doesn't work right That's there's been a lot of investments in schools and things that don't work but yeah. you know having one or two ipads for the schools can be valuable because there really are a lot of great learning applications that work on ipads but don't work on chromebooks so to have yes. a couple that you can pass around to different classes can be valuable for mm -hmm. schools and and that is the dilemma i'm in because as the art teacher, I don't have any iPads in my room. I have to utilize the resources of every classroom that is one-to-one -one in K-1-2. And then three, four, and five are on Chromebooks, and this doesn't work on a Chromebook. So I ask my lower grade levels teachers, I have to kind of make sure that they're charged theirs overnight and we're not doing testing. I mean, there's a lot of thought that goes into 
borrowing a class, you know, iPad or two, and they're really reluctant. And I understand that because once you use 3D Bear, it does pull and drain your power a little bit extra. So you definitely want to be polite and have good etiquette and charge that device before you return it. That right. that was something I would truly do just in, in order to borrow it again. <laughs> There's, there's just a certain niceness as your staff uh, sharing with you, as you being polite to make sure it's charged and returned and, like you received. And I see you, Landa, you've unmuted. Do you have a question or you have, because you had some interesting comments about um, using both, you know, all three modes of visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Yes. Technology allows you to do that and other thoughts. So did you have another, did you have a comment that you would like to make? Well, um, I was actually just reflecting on um, what you're sharing. So my background is art education, but I have moved over to professional development for technology. So I'm the tech support. Uh, so I was just listening to your thoughts and concerns about that. But I was asking, is 3D Bear geared towards the elementary level? Not necessarily for the secondary. I heard you mention it as preparation for secondary, but. Yeah, in elementary, it's great. And some of the, well, K-1-2, they have explored and love, love, love. My third graders, they just, they were learning the tools. Like third graders, once they were shared the, the basic functions down on the lower level of the toolbar, they just ran with it. And they were so happy to discover new little tips and tricks. And once one of them discovered it, they would go to their buddy and say, oh, I found this. I found this will work. Check yeah. this out. And that joy of third grade, I, I don't know, third grade's special to me. I, I think they're bubbly great. But <laughs> fourth grade, the one thing I love about fourth grade involving in this is that they have more of an opportunity to do storytelling uh, in a historical matter, like the prehistoric or the uh, medieval. Um, now they've got the colony house. So when you're thinking of fourth grade and then fifth grade, there's, there's level ups and the galleries supply so many images for the modeling. And again, Thingiverse allows you to bring in even more. It's just like endless possibilities to, to create with that. So depending on what you're solving for your problem or your learning and your subject area, you can adapt this to any of it. And if you want, um, so Natalie, if you stop sharing for a minute, I can show you a science, a science lab for high school, as an example. Um, okay, hold on. Here we go. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. So um, let me just see if I can. I, th I think you can see this. So uh, let me. I have to move these these off here. So for, for so here's a. I think for high school levels, it's mostly kind of activity labs that you want the kids to be doing. So if, so right. if you're doing a, a session on photosynthesis, for example, um, so you know here would be a lesson plan where the kids are eventually going to put together different stories. Uh, here's uh, the video is actually probably a little bit better than the than the picture, but it shows the sun. Um, the, the sun got cut off on the photo, but the sun, the plant, and uh, using H2O and CO2 to produce glucose. Um, and then in, instead of just modeling the, that, you know, the exact, well, how does photosynthesis come? You have the kids um, create videos about different ways photosynthesis um, affects their lives. So one group of kids might do something about photosynthesis at the uh, at the macro uh, you know environment and the cell levels, but somebody else might talk about how photosynthesis provides energy for leaf cells, including aerobic uh, respiration. Another one might explain how photosynthesis what has to do with leaves changing color in the autumn and why leaves are green, and then um, another. Another group, why do, you know, how do seeds get energy if they don't do photosynthesis? Or um, how does photosynthesis affect, interact with the cell respiration cycle? Or how does photosynthesis affect a, a carbon sink or, or global warming? So you, so you can have the kids work on really different aspects of photosynthesis, put together all of the different works, and then have a class video of here's how photosynthesis interacts with everything that, that we do. This is, there's, 
there's probably eight or nine other lesson plans that have already been developed at the high school level. Um, this, this lesson plan itself is designed to work if you were doing it in class for, um, let's see, for seven class periods, six or seven class periods. Um, but with remote learning, what you might end up doing is having two class periods of instruction, one at the beginning and one at the end, and having the kids work in groups on, you know, from home or online in order to do the, the different stories. Did that, you know, did that answer your question? Or is that too much? No, that was great. That, that okay. was awesome. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The other thing I had shared earlier was that my little pictures that went with the elements of art, I was going to put those in Book Creator so that my students could go there and then that would be another way of doing remote teaching. Like connect them with Book Creator to read the stories and then design their own. It's kind of a launch. I don't know. I'm just trying. <laughs> Yeah, so so I don't so on the secondary level for art teachers, they tend to really focus on the elements and design of art, and they don't always incorporate the other curriculum as eloquently as Mitch just did. Um, that, so, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, wow, you know, that's that's great. But you know, I was thinking for the secondary art teachers that I work with, they probably would go with the photosynthesis having variations in color and a leaf right. and go yeah. with that <laughs> mm -hmm. versus all of the other things that you shared. Yeah. But. And I see Denise is here tonight. She actually did a session on 3D bear and astronomy. So, wow. um, so it has that a great also, solar system. Yeah. The, the solar system, uh, the planets, astronauts, um, you know, she, she, that, that's archived on the EdChat Interactive website. So you, you can find that easily. And it's really? A link to VR, that is the nice thing with AR, introducing augmented reality to your younger students in middle school, launches them to have and experience the virtual reality experiences that more of an enrichment of a learning, that, that's a different, it's a different way of learning, but it's immersive. You're not doing the overlay with augmented, but you, you know, VR is totally, uh, I think it's more high school related. I don't well, know. I'll tell you, I had a big, I had, I was in a discussion today and the schools were saying, we don't want to touch VR because we're really concerned about hygiene. How do you pass oh, these yeah. from one child to another? We just, yeah. you know, up and we were th considering it, but at this point we don't want anything to do with it, which is kind of interesting. I, the I never issue. thought of it. There There's the other issue of the refresh screen. I believe the Halo uh, VR glasses had a very horrible refresh rate and was causing seizures hmm. students I heard that too. and they can't stand up they have to sit down and i actually tried out one at a conference for visti because you mentioned this thing visti yeah. which is the virginia version of the uh, international um, standards of technology but i i got dizzy just sitting down with it they've gotten better with it um but the htc vive i think are much much better but as far as vr there's a lot of technology support with it i will say for our district we have a very tight network and management of our devices and one of the reasons we do not have apple devices is because apple only allows maybe two companies that interact with a management system so that they can be managed and when you have one-to-one -one, that's a nightmare so, and it's very expensive. So we do the Chromebooks and we do um, Androids because they're easier to manage. And so yeah. for something like what you're doing, that would have to be uh, in a lab. They can't be connected to the network. They have to be manually downloaded, at least for our system. That's what we have to right. do. As so 3D family. Bear will work on Androids, by the way. Yes. Not, okay. not Chromebooks. Well, but it has to be a tablet, correct? Well, it could be a phone. Screen. It could be a phone Android or a tablet Android. Um, and technically, you know, I'm, I'm not really lying when I say it doesn't work on Chromebooks because the Chromebooks that it works are like $400 Chromebooks and that's not what people are buying. You know, schools aren't buying those. So technically there are two or three or more at this point Chromebooks that it works on, but the Chromebooks that schools are buying, you know, it needs, um, there, uh, it needs a rear facing camera. And so mm -hmm. most Chromebooks don't have a rear facing camera and it needs a gyroscope. Us. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's some Chromebooks. Lenovo 
at the flip. We gave mm -hmm. those to middle school students. Not a good idea. Oh. Not, a, not a good idea. Okay. <laughs> Damage. Yeah. <laughs> Drop. That is the one thing our school they purchased for our after school program protective cases and they are so powerful like we, we did have two different drops and nothing happened to our devices so i wish i could tell you the name of that and that may be something an I tweeted about. it may be i Looking i really good. cannot yeah, it, but it's a quality case and I appreciate that. And I know that when we go back, the etiquette of knowing our cleaning procedure and wipe down, that'll be something new. I haven't thought about that yet. Sadly, yes. I used to <laughs> right. run a lab and that was part of my shutdown procedures. Everybody got a little wipe and they wiped down everything before they left. So that's funny that now that's new. <laughs> yeah, right. well, it is, it's more that deliberate you know, for safety. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate being here tonight. This is so nice and warm. I, I didn't expect this and it's so, it makes me feel good that I so, was able to share my story. So <laughs> and I see from Megan, Megan wrote down um, Meraki, magic and pain at the same time. I love that. I've never heard of that before. I'm, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that's from another language. M-E-R-A-K-I. Okay. Magic and pain same time right I, I, I don't know right i'll have okay. to i'll have to investigate have to look it up. That. right okay yeah. all right well so um yolanda thank you for coming up and um natalie thank you so much for presenting how you're using augmented reality to integrate art into the curriculum of, of your school and hope to see you both online and megan uh, did you have something um of telling us revealing meraki <laughs> meraki is a management system for iPad. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll have to look that up. Yeah. Okay. Thank so you. I hadn't heard of Meraki. I've heard of Jam, Jamf, and FileWave. So there must be another company. So they must be expanding. That's good. And that's good. It's in this recording. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that that's how we all learn is by sharing. Yes. So, so I hope to see you all soon. Um, I'm re I've been recording this, so I'll get the archive up probably on Friday, and I'll let everybody know when it's up. And we'll put a link to the slides in there as well. And you said there's one tomorrow, correct? And there's one tomorrow on Immersive Worlds. So it's www.edchatinteractive.org, and okay. just register for it. Okay, I'm they're all free. For that one too. Okay, yeah, yeah thank great. You. All right, thank you. Okay, good night. Thank you. Good night.